everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to over dye some commercially dyed gradient yarn, specifically Stroll Gradient in the colorway Ice Sculpture. This yarn comes in a pack of two 50 gram balls of yarn that have the same gradient. And it's pastel enough that I thought it would be really, really fun to over dye. The yarn comes caked up, which it's bringing me now to an interesting thought. Do I want to dye them in the yarn cakes so we can add sort of some asymmetric variegated gradient on top of what is likely a smoother, with an asterisk, gradient? Uh, or do we want to uh, wind these into skeins and then do some kind of dye technique all over it? Um, so then we will still get a variegated gradient type technique, but with some, whatever we over dye over it. And the debate is strong and real. Before I reflect on that more, I did want to point out that we do see a little bit of variation in these colors. And I think that that comes from something that we see when we dye gradients from sock blanks in that uh, there is a little bit of resist from the stitches. And so therefore, while this is a gradient, um, I would say that within each color, there is a little bit amount of variation there already, uh, which isn't a bad thing. I just figured it was worth pointing that out uh, right now. I am torn because these look just so ready to just really just plop into a dye bath and to see what happens. I think that that could be really, really fun. But a caveat on that is that since these were commercially wound, they are a little bit tighter than they may have been otherwise. Uh, so if I was gonna wind them for cake dyeing, I would wind them looser. But the tempting part is that these are as closely matched as a yarn cake as I could possibly get. Uh, when I wind things myself, there will be inconsistencies cake to cake, and so they will then be less matched than if I just go ahead and dye them as is right now. You know what? Let's go for my first instinct. Let's mix up some dye, throw these in a pot, and see what we can get. This particular colorway and a bunch of others is still available at Knit Picks, so therefore I'm gonna order another one like in my next order so then we can play more with over dyeing a gradient, a commercially dyed gradient yarn. But I just wanna see what happens. Today we are gonna dye these cakes with some Wilton's Violet food coloring. This is one of my favorite food colorings to use just because it breaks into beautiful colors. And even though it has a blue finish and the center of these yarn cakes is blue already, uh, I just wanna see what will happen. So uh, I am going to take about a half teaspoon of this icing color and dissolve it into, I don't know, however much tap water this was in a cup. Now, in general, I am comfortable dyeing yarn with food coloring in my kitchen using kitchen pots, pans, and all of that stuff. Today, since I'm about to start a huge day of dyeing yarn, I will be using dedicated dye equipment, but this spoon is a food spoon and this cup is a new cup. So, Right now, once I'm done dissolving this, I'm gonna go set this and then start setting up my kitchen to dye yarn with my commercial items. Basically, I just wanted to talk about this so that way there isn't confusion there. And as for dyeing a commercially dyed yarn in cooking pots and pans, I don't know. Uh, I would say it's probably safer to stick with dedicated dye equipment, uh, but the main reason why I'm going for my dedicated dye equipment today is that I'm going to be using acid dyes and stuff today, and so I, if I'm going to be using dedicated dye stuff later on, it makes sense to start that way. But we are ready to go. In my eight quart dedicated dye pot, I have eight cups of water, and I'm going to come in and add our violet food coloring. And now this cup will go into my dedicated collection of cups and things that I use exclusively for dyeing yarn. But except for maybe a tiny bit, I'm gonna rinse this out. Everything went in really well. 
But now I am going to add our dry yarn cakes at the same time to the pot. And now I'm going to try to do this at the same time to the best of my ability. We are going to press them in so they can start to absorb some liquid. And probably should just be wearing gloves, but uh, <laughs> I might try dye my hands purple. I haven't squeezed it yet. I'm just pressing down. There's no acid here in the pot. Uh, and that is to allow a little bit more of the color to strike uh, to our yarn. Because Wilton's Violet does break. And this is because the Red 3, and now I am going to press these down together. The Red 3 in Wilton's Violet food coloring does strike to yarn really quickly. Like if you look at the side of the yarn cake, you'll see that it looks very pink already. Uh, the blues absolutely need uh, more acid and time to strike. But I thought that it could be nice to get this set up with our dry yarn without acid um, at first. And so then we will add acid uh, once we start heating this up. But I will go ahead and give one last squeeze to each. So we still have no acid in here. So the heat is now on. I think I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and add acid wherever our heat seems to be at that moment. I'm going to reduce the heat to low so it's a little less steamy. You might be able to tell that we do have so a lot of color binding already. And the water is getting more blue, but there is still red in there, just because we, my top water is a little acidic, but we haven't added acid. Let's go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar. And I am sloshing some on top of the yarn cakes trying to be equal, but uh, I expect that even in a couple minutes we might see the water get significantly more blue. And maybe we'll add more liquid at some point, but for now, uh, I'm just gonna wait, uh, I think five minutes, and then we'll come and see uh, if the water is looking more blue to me. It has been five minutes, and I don't know if you can tell, but there is a little bit of a film going on the water now. Now you can kind of see it on camera. Uh, that is some of those red threes in Wilton's Violet crashing out. And I would say the color, eh, I don't know if it's looking more blue per se, but I mean, yeah, we're, we're gonna leave it here for I think 20 minutes. But red three, it strikes to yarn so fast, but also, if not given that opportunity, it will crash out of solution once things become too acidic. So that's always something that you wanna keep in mind. And now, I'm gonna let this sit for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes on low heat, not a lot of change, but that isn't super surprising. I am moving both of the yarn cakes, lifting the bottom. Actually, we can, eh, the bottom doesn't look that, ooh, I accidentally moved it a little bit. There is gonna be, Lots of resist. Don't know how far things will penetrate, but I am going to add more water so the cakes can at least float and we'll add more acid. I'm going to add eight cups of water, which now we really have our cakes free floating so that we don't really see them anymore. And I am going to add two. Let's add three tablespoons of white vinegar. It is going to take time for this color to absorb. Normally, if I had a full skein, things would have absorbed by now. Uh, but with such a small surface area and me using as much dye as I would use to dye 100 grams, it's just gonna take more time. So what I'm gonna do is increase the heat. Once we get a little steamy, see a little movement here again, I will reduce the heat to low but I think I'm gonna wait 30 minutes and then we will add a yarn mop to the pot to help soak up some of these blues uh, and just to help. 
it has been 30 minutes and you can now see to the bottom of the pot it is clearing there's less color when we just look at our spoon but I am gonna go ahead and bring a yarn mop in Ooh. oh I was like why did we get pink it's because it rubbed on the edge of the pot and is picking up some of that crocked color I was not expecting to see those pinks but since we got some I mean why not lean in to it and so again the color on this yarn mop is pretty pastel this is a skein of stroll which is also 75% superwash merino 25% nylon like those cakes and the end is probably not gonna have very much color at all you can see just how quickly this bare skein is soaking up those colors now our cakes could have soaked into them some unbound dye so we might see more color uh, come out of those over time but I'm just slowly taking our dry skein and adding a little more at a time which is also going to make our pot a lot more crowded a lot more crowded but trying to get that last little bit wet um, and so now I'm actually going to turn off the heat but I'm going to leave all the yarn in the pot to cool off this will stay hot for a very long period of time so we'll still have a great at least 30 minutes of heat on this dip dyed skein even though we're not actively heating it anymore that would be sufficient for those colors to bind so I'm gonna set this aside to cool and once things are much much cooler <laughs> we will remove the yarn and take a closer look so first I'm gonna remove our yarn moth which is fun and dip dyed and has lots of blue and purple on it removing some of that liquid and next I am going to carefully remove our yarn cakes uh, all of the liquid has or all of the color has cleared and yeah, I guess let's go take a closer look so there is enough color on the outside that I have it a bit overexposed for you to see that color difference that we see but I wonder yeah if I start to move it you see those little reverse speckles peeking through I have no idea how deep the color went not that deep uh, because these are tightly wound enough but anyway I'm gonna let this it's mostly cool but I'm gonna let it finish cooling completely so then we can gently wash everything uh, and then put these I guess let them sort of sit for a bit to dry out as much as possible before I go and unravel them okay, let's start by rinsing these yarn cakes we will actually wash it a little more thoroughly uh, I don't I think I'm gonna do without soap for now honestly I'll wash it for real once I have reskained them because right now we can't access the middle and I don't really want it to sit with uh, soap for a long period of time. But, ooh, it's hard to know how much of that, it's funny, it's gonna be hard to know how much was the original blue. Well, we might still have a little bit of white, that's gonna be fun. How much was the original blue versus like some blue that we got from our broken violet. But the good news, is I'm not seeing any bleeding so we're gonna put these through the spin dryer and try to let them dry out as much as possible before we unravel them and to help balance the spin dryer is our yarn mop and this time we can a lot of soap <laughs> too much soap but this time we can use soap but I'm not expecting to see any bleeding here either and yeah I'm not seeing any bleeding there's not very much color on this yarn mop so this is not a surprise but anyway I am gonna put this through the spin dryer after I wash out the soap along with the yarn cake and then we'll come back in a couple days when the cakes are a little more dry I filmed this video a really really long time ago 
so long ago that I don't remember a lot of the details. So I expect editing Rebecca will pop back in for some additional thoughts. Uh, but I did leave these to dry completely and there are no musty smells or anything like that. And as for the color in these cakes, the dye did not penetrate very far, but I know I didn't re-skein them. The one unfortunate thing is that since filming this video, I realized that Nitpicks doesn't offer these scro strolled gradient duos anymore. I have more cakes of strolled gradient, but it's 100 gram cakes, not matched 50 gram cakes. So that's too bad, and therefore I now have regrets for uh, not doing other things with them as well. But let's go ahead and re-skein these. Uh, on my uh, skein winder to see how they turned out. And one other note from our yarn mop, there was some color transfer from the cakes onto here as it was drying, because I sort of had the cake sitting on this mop. I believe, I think that that was the case, uh, but I do know that we need to go ahead and wash these completely after we're done filming this video. The last thing before we go reskein is you can see some of this reverse speckling because of the resist and it is so beautiful. Uh, you can see like white specks and then some little bits of blue highlight in there, which is so fun. It's fun to see the blues that I think are getting less and less bright as we come through the center really show up with a lot of purple sort of mottledness on there. It's really fun, really, really fun. There's not very much yarn left when we really start to see some of those purples in the interior coming through the outside of the yarn. I believe that's where these cakes were white. The skeins were pretty well matched, although one of them seemed to be a tiny bit longer on the end. I believe that these two 50 gram cakes would have been identical with the gradient placement uh, before I dyed them. And now they are extremely similar, but not identical. It's not a perfectly matched pair because, well, it was two different cakes that we dyed. But I think that they should match up really, really well. You have this lighter, almost, I guess, white and deeper purple speckled. And then the blues get progressively darker or brighter, I suppose, as you go through. And I would say that the amount of purple throughout the midsection is fairly consistent, uh, but we definitely have more of it towards this outside edge. But I think overall this added some really, really cool variation on to our yarn. The yarn isn't as crimped as it would have been if these were sock blanks that I dyed but there is some crimp to it. And good thing that I'm gonna go ahead and wash this off camera anyway. I don't know if I'll see any color bleeding since I did see color transfer onto the yarn mop that I'll bring back in a minute. I think, I think I saw that. Uh, since I, but then since I do think I saw that there might be some bleeding and if there is, I will come and check in. But otherwise, I think that it's safe to assume that we've got this fun, uh, gradient colorway, starting from overdying a commercial gradient colorway. Editing Rebecca here. I just finished washing the yarn and I did not see any bleeding. I do wish that Knit Picks had more of these gradient duos uh, because something about starting with a matched gradient pair already is just a fun way to start to then do an overdying type step. Of course, there are like 100 gram gradient sets and we could get two of those to play with side by side but it's not quite the same as having a set that is specifically a matched pair likely because i think nitpicks dyed them as a blank to begin with from some of the modeling that was present in the yarn already but as i said i do have a 100 gram gradient of this same original colorway so how would you like to see me over dye this yarn there are so many things that we could do to uh, either convert it into something else, which to either cover it up, which isn't really what I want to do, or to take advantage of it and enhance it for something that is less of a smooth gradient and more of a wild type gradient. So 
let me know what you would like to see down in the comments below. I am counting on editing Rebecca to help me out. I think I dyed this yarn using Wilton's Violet Food Coloring just because of the pinks and purples I'm seeing on this yarn mop. I think. Uh, and I think that there was enough resist that it's hard to know how much breaking we saw on those yarn cakes because we had blue in there already. So that I don't know for sure. But actually there wasn't that much blue towards the outside. So really, maybe all the color really did mostly strike to the outside. Either way, this yarn mop is a really fun and pretty pastel. Uh, and I really like it. But because I don't know, and I don't remember exactly if some color bled onto this from those yarn cakes, I think that I should take this and over dye it. And so even though I enjoy it as it is, I think I'll over dye it because that way it can get some additional heat setting just in case. And well, then we can have an over dyeing some hand dyed yarn video. What do you think? I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.